Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are celebrating War Selection's newest arrival. Poland has made it into the game. And who would be better suited to assist me with that than my Polish goulash friend Cheese Wheel Lord. Cheese is also a content creator for War Selection and he uploads regularly. Do me the favor and check him out. The link to his channel is in the video description below. As always, I will demonstrate the units and their capabilities and share their stats with you in this video. Arriving in the first industrial revolution with Poland coming from Eastern Europe, we will immediately have access to the Yulan Cavalry Unit in the stables. A rather cheap melee cavalry unit that might not be worth spamming right away. But if you want to harass enemy economy without paying any metal for it, then this unit could be the right choice for you. Especially when your medieval strategy included units from the stables. The second unit of the first industrial era is a Tank Cat KS, which becomes available after researching tank blueprints in the arsenal. This unit works like an armored car. It has slightly improved stats but cannot shoot while moving. Very useful when you want to defend against infantry or mounted guardsmen, but also a great unit to attack the economy of your opponents. However, since they require a factory, an arsenal and the tank research, you will not be able to use them in early IR1. I recommend to start amassing them during the transition to IR2 as you unlock the upgrade for them. But first we have to discuss the buildings unique to Poland, which are unlocked in IR1. The first building you unlock is the Stone Mine, which works like a mine except that it produces 70 building materials with every tick. A very interesting addition to the game, which allows you to either cut back on workers in the late game or help out teammates who require a lot of building materials. The second building is a Dragon's Teeth anti-tank structure. This replaces the generic anti-tank hedgehog and costs no metal, which allows you as Poland to build the first defensive line for your team for a low cost once you arrive in IR1. In order to build the Dragon's Teeth, you need to have a stone mine first, but once you are set up, you should be able to make advancing for enemy tanks and vehicles hell. Once you arrive in the second industrial era, you can upgrade your Tankat KS into a Tankat KD for a minor upgrade cost of 300 wood and 100 metal. Turning your tank cats into a little armored artillery unit with a decent range, okay damage and a high fire rate. This unit combined with unupgraded tank cat KS will most likely be able to counter most unit combinations that your enemies might throw at you. With enough armor to be safe from infantry, the damage required to take out tanks and the range and speed to be a really annoying threat for your enemies to deal with. In your stable, you will be able to unlock the grenades upgrade for your Ulans, making them a very mobile unit that can be used to counter tanks, destroy factories and barracks or the enemy economy. Although they are able to destroy the enemy town hall, they deal reduced damage to town halls, which will give your enemy plenty of time to react. But if your goal is to put pressure on the enemy's backline so they have less forces to defend their frontline and make pushing easier for your allies, then I think it's still a good idea to try. The next unit you unlock in IR2 is the Saboteur. It's a special unit you can recruit in the barracks. They have no direct attack and instead are able to drop a suspicious bag every 90 seconds for free, which deals a massive 500 damage in an area to anything but enemy town halls and wonders. They cost no metal and cannot be targeted by enemy units unless within range of an enemy machine gun or vision tower. Being visible nonetheless and vulnerable to splash damage, this unit is not capable of defending against the main enemy army and sneaking into the enemy base will rarely be possible as every enemy builds towers in their base nowadays. But I could still come up with three uses for this unit. Either place them in an APC to destroy enemy barracks and factories after a quick drop off or keeping them close to your town hall in a machine gun tower and releasing them to counter a tank rush of any kind. But also dropping suspicious bags to blow up the enemy tank hedgehog line should make this unit useful. The last unit you unlock with Poland in IR2 is the amphibious tank, comparable to medium tanks like the T-34 and wheel tanks. This unit allows Poland for a sneaky tank rush across the water at incredibly reduced speed and vision range, which means you should probably accompany them with a battleship for a view range, or only drive around an enemy anti-tank hedgehog line that ends in the sea to avoid making them an easy target which only costs you time and resources. Additionally to these units and buildings, Poland has access to tractors in IR1, which helps your economy when focusing on multiple factories early on to prepare for a tank at spam. Poland has no limitations on their docks but cannot recruit any balloon-based units in their airfield and lacks the RPG unit just like Russia and Japan. 
However, they are given the motorcycle unit that so far only Germany and the abstract IR have access to. Overall, I think Poland is a wonderful addition to the game, allowing to counter most meta and game strategies, like wheel tanks with India, T-34 tank rush and even the French RPGs in APC's strategy. A big thank you again to Cheese Wheel Lord for spending his precious time so I could gather the footage for this video. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments below. Thank you everybody for watching and see you in the next one.